Hey guys, you're watching Downski, and in this video, we're going to be designing a fictional Windows 12 homepage. And then I'm going to show you how you can hand off the project for development using Zeppelin. You can also download the XD file using the link in the video description, and you can also get started using Zeppelin, and it's free for up to one project. So you can fully try it out before you sign up or anything like that. So back when I worked on client projects all those years ago, Zeppelin was essential in bridging the gap between what I produced as a designer and what the developers then built. In a nutshell, it removes all the guesswork for how a website or an app is supposed to look and function, and it gives developers everything they need, whether it's assets, information, or code. So if you're like me and the process of handing off projects has in the past been frustrating, caused confusion, and unnecessarily wasted time on both sides, well, you're not alone, and Zeppelin is the perfect solution. There's a link to check out Zeppelin below, and there's also a timestamp if you'd like to fast forward to that Zeppelin specific section. But first up, design time. So let's hop into XD and get started. Rightio, so we're now in Adobe XD. I've created a new document and I have an artboard that is 1920 wide and almost four and a half thousand pixels high. And if I select the pasteboard, I can unhide my assets folder here. This includes some icons and images that I'm going to be using as part of the design. So let's go and hide this again for now, and we'll come back to that later in the video. First, I'm going to select the artboard and change the background color to F7, 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 a very light gray. Below this, I can check the box to enable the grid, and you can see on the desktop version, I'm using a 12 column grid, and I'm just going to bring that opacity down so it's a bit more subtle. Now with the rectangle tool, I'm going to click and drag to draw a four-sided shape, turn off the border, and then give this a fill. I'm just going to pick a gray for now. Now I can adjust the size and position of this. Again, I'm going to grab the rectangle tool, draw another box and give this a slightly different color gray and essentially start wireframing the page and mapping out where my different elements are going to go. Next, select the Type tool and click anywhere and type some text. I'm going to snap this in the center and then pick a font. And normally at this stage, I wouldn't worry about the font too much, but because I know the final design uses Acumen Pro, I'm just going to add it in now anyway. So you can see I've duplicated this holding Alt or Option and I'm now going to make this smaller and I'm going to use this for some more descriptive text. There we go, text added. Now let's play around with the formatting and use these basic techniques to build out the wireframe for the rest of the page. There we go, coming together nicely. Next, select the line tool, click and hold shift to draw a straight line. For the color picker, we can select white as the border color and adjust the size. We can also click on either end and hold shift to adjust the length, and we can select round cap to round off the corners of that line. Next, hold alt or option and drag to duplicate the selected object, and with both selected, right click and make a component. From the assets panel, you can see all the components I've already created, and I'm going to call this one icon-menu. Let's do the same for the button as well. We'll call this button, as you might expect, and then right click this, copy, go down to the bottom, paste this in, and replace the sign up button with this new button that is an instance of a component. You can see now if I change the fill color for the master component, it actually changes the color of both of them. Very cool, but let's undo that for now. Next, I'm going to grab the rectangle tool again, draw a square, and then I'm going to pick a lovely blue. Let's move this one over, duplicate this shape, and I'm now going to pick some more colors as well. 
Let's do one more and just pop white on the end as well. Now I've got these four colors, I can select them, click the plus icon and add these to my colors. We can then delete these shapes, select a few different instances of some text, and then do the same thing. Click the plus icon and they're now added to our assets panel. And we can now edit these fonts directly from here. So I can change the color, the weight, the size, and that updates throughout the entire document. I can also right click a color and copy the six digit hex value and then paste that onto another element in the assets panel. And now that I've defined some colors and character styles, I'm going to take a minute to start to build out the design. And the great thing about adding these into the asset panel is you can make creative document wide changes without having to go through and update every single instance in the document. You can change the color or change the font from that panel in the left and it updates throughout the entire document. Now I'm going to grab the pen tool and click and hold shift to draw a little tick icon. Then I can go and thicken this up, round off those corners, and then right click and select apply border color to give it that nice blue color. Now I can move this into position and adjust the size as well. Next I can select both elements and make this into a component. Now, because it's a checkbox, let's give this component a new toggle state. We'll call this selected. Go back to the default state, select the tick itself and bring the opacity down. Then if we select the whole component again, switch over to selected, select the blue tick and then bring that opacity up. Come back out and select the component again and we can now toggle between those two different states, checked and unchecked. Now we've set this up, we can get rid of the other text in the box, duplicate this over, and now both options are using that same checkbox component. So you can see I've turned it on for the first one, and I could turn it on for the second one, but I think I'll leave this one unchecked. Let's give this component a name, we'll call it checkbox, and then just spend a minute making a few more creative changes to the document as a whole. I'm also going to adjust the corner radius of this box here. Select the color as white and then add a drop shadow. Let's increase these values and make this nice and big and nice and soft. I'm also going to drop the opacity so it's nice and subtle. Next I'm going to duplicate this shape, turn off the drop shadow, give this the color blue and adjust the size. I'll then need to of course update the corner radius as well. Lastly, I'm going to add some text. I'm going to type the word icons and position this in the center of the title bar at the top. Now with everything selected, I can right click and select group. Now let's make a few more creative adjustments to some of the colors. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. Now it's time to unhide these assets and bring these into play. First of all, I'm going to select all of the icons and drag these into the icons box. Next, there's the design concept itself. So let's drag all of this in. And then we have the taskbar that's going to run behind that window design. Now for the background image, I'm going to move this up, duplicate that rectangle for the header out to the side, 
select both and then right click and mask with shape. I can then move the plain rectangle out and then put the background image in its rightful place. Also making sure that we send it to the back. We can also double click the rectangle on the right and select individual points and then delete one to leave a triangle. We can then move this back into position, snap this in place and select black as the fill color. I can now go and check background blur and adjust the settings to blur out part of that header image. And I'm going to go inside this taskbar component and do exactly the same thing. There we go, lovely. And it's time again to make lots of minor tweaks to the entire design. And as you can see, it's all come together very nicely. However, the layers and components are a complete mess. So I'm going to take a moment to organize all of these components, layers and groups and get everything looking much tidier. Lastly, it's time to mark the assets we would like exported. So first of all, I'm going to double click to go inside this group. And with the menu icon selected, check the mark for export box. You can also do this from the layers panel with this icon here. And you can also select multiple layers and go up to object and select mark for export from here. So now I need to go through the entire design and just mark up exactly what's going to be exported. Things like text won't need to be exported because this will come through into Zeppelin as you'll see in a moment. But anything like icons and images, background images, just mark it all for export. So there we go, we've created a delicious homepage in XD. Now I'm just gonna take a minute to do a tablet and mobile version and then also create a few different states for the sign up form. There we go, here's one I created earlier. And now it's time to go to zeppelin.io. As I mentioned earlier, you can get started for free. And as you can see here, I'm in the browser version, but you can also download the desktop app, which I've done already. And now I need the Zeppelin plugin for XD. So let's go down to the plugins panel, select discover plugins, and we'll do a search for Zeppelin. Once this pops up, install the plugin. Okay, all good. Switch back into Adobe XD and you'll see it listed here. You can then open the plugin and then select all of the different artboards. You can either select an element on the artboard or select the artboard itself. Either way is fine. And now they're all selected, I can click export. Zeppelin does its thing. And currently we haven't created any projects. So if we select go to project, we can now create a personal project and choose whether it's a web project or an iOS or Android app. You can also create team-based projects if your account is set up in such a way. Okay, from the top right corner, let's give this a name. We'll call this Windows 12. And we can make sure the project density is set correctly. And we can add a description to the project. Now if we come back out, we can see the project listed and we can right click and invite people to work on this project or we can share a web link. But for now, creating the project is enough. Let's switch back to XD and try exporting again. 
And there we go, you can see the Windows 12 project appears and we can add a commit message to describe this export. Again, just confirm the density and then Zeppelin will upload and export all of those different assets that you marked for export, along with fonts, character styles and all sorts of other things. Cool, so that's done. You can also create high level style guides or design systems that you can use to manage multiple projects. But for this one, we're gonna keep it local. So let's double click to go inside and you can see the project loads in. And then up here, we can toggle from the dashboard to our local style guide. And it's pulled through all of those custom colors and we can add those into Zeppelin. As you can see, these all have names with all of the different color values and we can rename these and tweak them if we need to. We've got the same for the character styles that are now listed here. We can add all of these text styles and again rename these with something more descriptive if you haven't done so already. So H1, H2, paragraph, etc. And over on the right, Zeppelin's very kindly organized all of the CSS code for all of these different styles. You can also control things like spacing and layout and even reusable components as well. Let's switch back to the dashboard. Another great feature is screen variants. So for example, I can select the desktop, tablet and mobile versions, right click, and select set as screen variants. These are now grouped together and you can also do the same thing by dragging multiple screens on top of each other. Let's double click to go inside and you can see these all listed at the top. And if I click on the icon on the right hand side, I can adjust the order of these and also rename them. Now that's all set up, I can toggle through the different states of this sign up form. And because it's set up as a screen variant, it's all contained together within the same screen. Now let's take a look at the other screen variant and just zoom out. Let's just tweak the order of these, there we go. So the same screen, but you can see the desktop, tablet and mobile variations. And if I click on certain elements, you can see all of these measurements and information becomes available on the right. And just by moving my mouse around, positioning, spacing, all of these different dimensions is overlaid onto the design. And of course I can scroll the page and if I click outside of the design, I can access annotations, which is a new feature on the right, as well as comments. There's reusable components down the bottom and also assets whereby you, your team or the developer can download individual assets or entire groups of assets. You can also pin comments with this icon at the bottom, click anywhere and then you could type a comment. And again, with the addition of annotations, this can be selected from the drop down here. Nice. You can post the comment and then other people can reply to you. Or in this example, I can just reply to myself. You can also right click a pinned comment for more options, one of which is delete comment. Okay, let's go back to the top and then go back to the dashboard. Zeppelin also integrates with other apps like Slack, Jira, Teams, Trello and Storybook. So if you use any of these, that's a big plus. You can also choose to share the project and you get some share links here. These can be copied to the clipboard with a single click. And if we go back out to the main project view, we can then hop back into XD. Let's just say that I make some changes. I'm going to move this up ever so slightly. I then click export again. You can then see my only project listed and then add a commit message to describe the changes. So moved section up and then click export again. Zeppelin will then upload these latest designs into the project. And then I can go back inside the project go inside the screen variant and from the bottom left corner you can see the different versions and those commit messages as well. So you can keep track of any changes or updates to particular screens. And there we go, that wraps up the video. So remember you can get started with Zeppelin for free and there is a link in the video description. A huge thank you to Zeppelin for sponsoring this video and of course to you for watching. Take care and I'll see you next time.